Chapter 4 Above the Canopy Krista was blinded by the intense light above the canopy, but when her eyes adjusted to the glare, she stared in amazement at the scene in front of her. She'd never seen so much sky. It was so blue, and it went on forever and ever. White puppy clouds drifted above her. Below, the treetops stretched to the horizon like a soft, green, mossy carpet. Never in her wildest dreams had she pictured the world above the canopy to be so beautiful or so quiet. She soaked up the warmth of the sun, breathed in the clean fresh air, and stretched her wings. She flew across the treetops, twisting and twirling, enjoying a freedom she'd only ever dreamt about. Then, daring to explore further, she soared upwards, spiraling, tumbling, free-falling, riding the breeze. From high in the sky, she noticed a towering rock far off in the distance. A thin black swirling cloud rose from one side of it. Krista had never seen a rock that was taller than a tree, or a cloud that rose from the ground. What a strange mist, she thought to herself. But before she had more time to think about it, the sky around her darkened. <gasps> Looking up, she froze in horror. A huge peregrine falcon was plummeting out of the clear blue sky. Its gleaming deadly talons stretched out towards her. She screamed as the falcon reached to grab her and dived for the canopy. <gasps> Her heart beating faster than her wings, she flew like the wind, disappearing back down through the trees. But the falcon didn't want to lose her. It followed her, with a crash of broken branches into the forest. It was so close behind her, she could feel its breath on her wings. May the angels of soul protect me! She cried, dodging a shower of broken branches and falling leaves. Desperately looking around her, she saw a chance for escape, a tiny opening in a maze of prickly vines hanging down in front of her. With her wings tucked close by her side, she covered her face with her hands and dived through the opening. When she shot out the other side, she knew she was safe. The falcon dived after her, but the dense vines tore its wings. Squealing angrily, it flapped around until it was free, then headed back to the open sky. Krista didn't look back, nor did she slow down. Her heart pounding, she sped through the forest. In a blind dash from the falcon, she didn't see Pips until she crashed into him, bowling them both head over heels in a flurry of twisted wings. <coughs> they yelled, tumbling through the air. What are you trying to do, kill me? Pips bellowed, finding Krista wrapped up in his arms. That was too close for comfort, she cried, clinging to him. You could have got us all killed, shouted Stump, noisily revving his beetle. Yeah, we were almost falcon fodder, yelled Knot. So what did you see up there, Chris? asked Pips. But Krista didn't reply. She flew out of his arms and disappeared through the trees, toward the Antarctic beached forest. She just had to tell Maggie Loon what she'd seen. Hey, wait! What, what'd you see? Up there. Maggie? Maggie? Oh, Maggie! She found Maggie floating in her aerial garden, tending to her rare seedlings. But when Krista tried to describe what she'd seen above the canopy, she had trouble finding the right words. I just saw the most incredible thing about the canopy. A whole other world. The sky went on forever, and way over in the distance, as far as I could see, there was this enormous rock. Like a... And next to it was a... a... I don't know. It looked like a, a strange black cloud rising out of the earth. Maggie Loon sighed. The rock you saw was Mount Warning and the mist you described was probably smoke. Krista had never heard of smoke, and Maggie's explanation, that smoke is the cloud of fire, 
only added to her confusion. But what's fire? She wanted to know. Magi told her that fire was something that didn't happen in the rainforest because it was too wet. But isn't the whole world wet? Krista asked. Oh, there are many things in our world you don't yet know about, Krista. But you don't have to fly above the canopy to learn about them, Magi replied, fumbling through the pockets of her robe. Then, holding out a tiny seed, she explained that some of those things were far away, some were deep inside her heart, and others were right under her nose. To Krista's amazement, the seed floated out of Maggie's hand towards her. Google-eyed, she watched it hang in midair. That's incredible. There are worlds within worlds, Krista. Maggie said, as a leaf and several tiny pebbles also defied gravity and floated into the air joining the seed. As Krista watched, a miniature replica of the solar system revolved before her eyes. Whatever you saw above the canopy, no matter how strange it seemed, is a part of our world, said Maggi. Krista watched spellbound as the seed grew larger and changed color until it was blue like the sky and dotted with wispy white clouds. Maggi Loon's words were crystal clear, but they sounded far away. Krista knew Maggi was leading her into a magical dimension. Through a tiny seed, she was being shown a larger world, one that was dotted with mountains and rivers and vibrant green forests. It's so beautiful. Remember, Krista, everything in creation is connected, continued Maggi. That is the magic of life. From the solar system to our own planet, right down to this forest and into a tiny seed, everything in creation is connected to everything else. Never forget, we are all a part of the magic web of life. Magi stopped talking and the dreamlike vision ended. Dazed by what she'd just experienced, Krista reached out and plucked the seed out of the air. The pebbles and the leaf immediately fell back to the ground. Maggi chuckled at Krista's look of disappointment, then told her that the web of life was held together by a delicate balance of forces. Taking the seed from her, Maggi placed it on top of a jagged dead tree stump where it instantly started to grow. Krista was thrilled to see the plant growing so magically, but when Maggi asked her to help, the plant shriveled up the moment she touched it. Krista was heartbroken and desperately wanted to know what she'd done wrong. Why can't I do it? You were trying too hard, Maggi said, reviving the plant. Everyone can call on the power of nature. It's within us all but you'll have to discover your own way to use it. Remember, it's a gentle power. Maggi handed Krista another seed. She told her to plant it somewhere safe in the forest and to look after it. Krista tucked the seed carefully inside her cobweb pouch and agreed to come back and tell Maggi how the seed was growing. But once Krista left, Maggi Loon allowed worry to cloud her face. Birds flew down to comfort her, and a branch of the newly grown fig tree reached down and lifted her high into the forest. One by one, the trees parted until there was a long, leafy tunnel stretching through them. At the end of this tunnel, Mount Warning was visible. A thick column of dark smoke rose from the base of the dark mountain. With a terrible sense of foreboding, Maggi knew only too well what that dark smoke meant. Hexes.